personally, it was I, I had just come off a show that I'd been on for six years, um, where I played a really good guy. <laughs> so. As a character, I wanted to play someone completely different. That was number one. And I also wanted to do a project that had a different feel to it. Um, so the fact that it was science fiction, that it was Stephen King, that it was epic in, in, in kind of scope. Um, and the people behind it, you know, quite frankly, uh, CBS, Stephen King, and Steven Spielberg. It's funny because we have such a large cast and everyone, I think, starts with the same answer, which is obviously Stephen King and Steven right. Spielberg, um, which is a given. Um, but the more personal answer for me is that in addition to working with good people, which is really important, um, I always look for a role where uh, I feel like women are fairly represented. Um, I'm interested in playing women who are, um, who are strong, uh, smart, complicated <laughs> um, and who, who's, whose point of views are just as strong and just as important in the story um, as the men's. I just just really look for good writing for, for female characters and I felt like this script had that um, in more than one role actually. Right. So. My favorite thing about her is actually the most challenging thing to play for me, which is she's someone who, um, because she's a journalist, is very good at keeping her cards pretty close to the to the vest. Um, and she's someone who I think sees letting people see your feelings as a as, as a vulnerability um, that is that is a liability. You know, if people know how you're feeling, they know better how to hurt you. And that's something I felt was um, needed to be built in um, so that she could be someone who could really evolve. I wanted to start her um, I wanted to start her as someone who was really like a, a journalist, you know, had that outward, my opinions and my feelings are my own, right, right, and right. I'm going to just take in the world around me. And then when the dome comes down, she's really forced, there's nowhere to go and there's nowhere else to examine, and so she has to look at her own life. Um, so I find her really interesting because I think she's someone who, who has a, a very large shift, you know, she goes from Julia Shumway, the reporter, uh, the journalist to Julia Shumway um, have now I have to deal with my personal life right. <laughs> and right. those things right. are so different. The Julia Barbie relationship it's fun how much people are into it and I think it's true to life you know like the heart wants what it wants right. and and um, and in life you know it's it's very it's all well and good to have the, the larger bigger questions of you know um, who are we as people and what is my purpose in life, you know, being the sort of equivalent to what is the dome and where did it come from. Um, but the truth is on the day to day, what we're really interested in are, you know, um, love and does the do, does this person I love still love me? And, you know, will I will I meet someone and will I feel like I had purpose in my personal life? Right, um, sure. That's definitely something we all share. And the thing that I love about the, the Barbie Julia relationship is you have the initial attraction, um, you know, of the, the sheer chemistry of it. Um, and then you also have this idea that they are both outsiders trapped in a place they never intended to stay. Right. And so everyone else grew up in Chester's Mill and they, they're really isolated in their, in their experience because they don't know anybody. She's been there for six months. He's just passing through. And so they find themselves kind of with this familiarity um, as outsiders, um, that that they they are able to share each other's experience in a way that they can't share it with other people in the town, um, and that for me is a really valid reason to be attracted to someone because you know just just physical chemistry, just two people being pretty, <laughs> and maybe wanting to fall into bed together. That's you know that's interesting for five seconds. Right. That really doesn't, and in life it doesn't hold our attention for long. Um, and then and then also once you satisfy that, there's nothing else to to go on. Right. Um, whereas if you have two people who are sort of struggling to share a common experience and are trying to carry each other through something that's hard to understand and hard to wrap your head around, um, I think the complexities of that can be interesting for quite a while. I spent a lot of time talking about, the, or thinking about this, and talking to the producers and writers. Um, because it was important to me that he wasn't just some stereotypical bad guy. Because I don't think people will really, uh, you know, grow up or just decide to be bad people. I think, particularly politicians, I think they think that they're doing good things. And it was important to me that Big Jim was a guy who had, I, it would be too easy to, to dismiss him if he were just a bad guy. So some of the things he does are bad, 
but he thinks he's doing them for the right reasons. So he doesn't think of himself as bad. Right. You may look at him and go, whoa, that's a bad guy, right. but he thinks that he's doing the right thing. And in fact, he saves the town in Under the Dome more than once. Um, and he thinks he's doing uh, good. And uh, we're going to explore that more, hopefully in the next, even more in the next, uh, next season. It was a great vehicle, and that's uh, one of the reasons, you know, the, the first the question we talked about, why, why I took it, you know. It was such a different guy to play. And, um, you know, as much as I love Hank and, and Breaking Bad, six years is a long time to be in one, one character, you know. And it was a great journey, but I was willing, uh, ready to do uh, something that was, you know, very much different. I had bought the novel to read it. I bought one for Stephen King to sign, and then I bought a one that I was going to read. <laughs> And uh, having talked to the producers and the writers and realized that the TV show was going to be different, um, I didn't want to confuse myself by thinking of the Big Jim in the, in the, script, uh, in the uh, novel. Uh, so I figured I would only take Big Jim from what they wrote me in, in, in the TV script, you know. I chose to read the novel before the series for about five minutes. It's about the five minutes between booking it and getting to the bookstore and buying it, is, you know, in its 1,100 yeah. pages. Um, and then... And then I just had this moment of, uh, A, oh my god, I don't have time. I really don't have time. Um, it's just so massive. I also uh, had co uh, conversations with the writers who let me know about all the changes that they were making with Stephen King's blessing. So, you know, we're going to change this, 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 and this. Um, and so then I just thought, well, I'll live in the world of our, our play. Then I'll live in the world of the, you know, Chester's Mill and the Dome that the writers have created for this story, rather than trying to straddle two worlds. And then when I'm done, when we're completely finished with the series, then I can go and, and read it afresh and, you know, and then make my own comparisons and have my own thoughts about what we changed. It's technical and it's a work of imagination. Um, I do ask a lot of questions to the special effects people about, you know, what it's going to look like, and they're very good at communicating. You know, here's why I need you to be very specific here. Here's what's going to happen. Um, our directors will talk us through it. And now, you know, and now the mini dome is pink, and now it's white, and now the, you know, and now it's going into the sky. So they, um, they do. They're kind of shouting direction. Um, and then, and then aside from that sort of technical part, I do think it has to be personal on some level. And, and whether you use something that's personal to you, that's a metaphor, you know, the dome as metaphor for whatever, um, or whether it's just a sheer act of imagination, I do think that it's important to decide what the impact is for you so that you can have a, a genuine reaction. I am going to encourage them to kind of explore the whole uh, insanity versus sanity thing because I think it's a really interesting topic. You know, if you look at if you look at like bad leaders over in, in, in over history and over time, they've done some really horrible things. But in, in most cases, they think they've been ordained by God. Sometimes, Absolutely. certainly ordained by or they. You know, I think they're delusional in, in a really weird megalomaniac you know way. Yeah. Um, and so I hope that we get to uh, explore that. We, we've certainly set it up that there's some of these issues in the in the Rennie family with uh, the the uh, the departed wife and the son. So I think it'd be a really interesting thing to explore if you really believe, you know, that that God in the form of this dome has chosen you to do these things, then, wow, that justifies a lot of things. <laughs> and to kind of go back and forth between whether you really believe that or whether it's just, I don't know, I think it's going to be interesting topics. And, and whose side is that dome on? You know, uh, it's not clear. It, it, we've, made it, we've made it clear in this season that it has, it is a sentient uh, being of some sort. It has feelings, it, 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 it was, you know, things happen where it goes dark at the end and it goes light. Um, so I think it, to explore that and to explore one's relationship with that dome, yeah. as much as relationship with the people, is, is an interesting topic. My hope for the series is, is what I wish for every series that I will, you know, have done and will do, or any series that I watch, which is that it will go on long enough to enjoy it, right. um, but only as long as there's really great story to tell. And I trust our writers with that. Yeah. I trust that, that people ask all the time, you know, when is the dome going to come up? Are they going to get out of Chester's Mill? Are we going to find out what the dome is? And I do have faith that, you know, if people stay with us in the viewership, they stay with us, they will get those answers, but that we won't drag it out unnecessarily. When the time comes for the dome to either be revealed or go away right. or whatever, or who, who are you know, really the that will happen. Guys. 
it would always be rough to say you expected it, but I must say, you know, with the promotion that CBS put behind it, and um, they started seeing early on what was going on in terms of what they were seeing um, in dailies and things like that. Um, it would be arrogant for me to say that I expected it, but it wasn't unexpected. Yeah.